Hello and welcome to this episode of Thousand Dollar Car Guy. Now, you're probably here for one reason. Your IMA battery pack doesn't work anymore, and you want to know how to bypass it, but still retain your DC to DC inverter so that your car doesn't die in the middle of the road. Well, today, I'm going to show you how. It's my way. So if you're anything like me, you recently purchased a 2000 to 2006 Gen 1 Honda Insight. And well, since it's about 21 years old now, it probably means that your battery pack doesn't work anymore. That doesn't mean that this car can't be driven, it just means the hybrid system in it will no longer function the way it's supposed to. Of course you have some options. You could fix the battery pack for between five and $700 yourself, or you could have someone else do it for you for $2,500. Since I'm not interested in paying for those kinds of repair costs, it means that I need Need to do things for a lot cheaper. So why do we have to do this? Well that's because the Honda Insight doesn't have a traditional alternator like most vehicles would have. It uses a DC to DC inverter that's located in the rear of the car. That sends another 13 volts up to the front battery to keep it topped off. The previous owner of this car actually drove around with two batteries because he didn't do this modification. As soon as one of his batteries would be depleted, the car would die because there'd be no spark for it, and then he would swap over the battery and then charge them back home. In order to be able to drive this car every day like I want to, I need the car to be topped off with battery all the time. Now, there is a way to do that, and I'm going to show you how. Start by opening up your rear hatch. Here you see the tools we will need to accomplish this task. A Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, ratchet, Torx bit, size T30, and a 10 millimeter. You can accomplish this in many ways. These are the tools I've chosen. Remove the rear trunk carpet. It's a small flap, lift up on it, and pull the whole assembly out of your way. Near the center, you'll find a plate. Remove this plate with the two 10 millimeter bolts. Removing these bolts allows you to remove the plate. The plate covers up the enormous breaker for the electric motors back here and the battery pack. As you can see, mine has been switched into the off position. Do this before moving forward. This must be done for your safety. Once the breaker has been switched off, go around and find all the T30 Torx bit head screws and remove them. You may also encounter a lot of 10 millimeter bolts. Remove them as well. The idea is we're trying to remove this large aluminum panel. It is the access point to get to where we need to go. So anything that's holding down this plate needs to be removed. With all of your screws removed, you may find that it's still impossible to lift out the panel. That may be because you have these plastic screws holding this panel down, which is stopping this panel from lifting out. Go ahead and remove these screws. Place this aside where you won't lose it. You will need them again. Remove all the ones in your way. There may be a couple hidden, so please look around till you find them. With that done, we can now safely remove our access panel. This may try to fight you a little bit, but be patient with it. It is very thin aluminum and you don't want to distort it. You'll have to go diagonal to get it out because it's larger than the opening of the hatch. The area we're trying to get to is right here. Inside the car, this is the area I was pointing to. You'll see two plugs here have been disconnected. They're very simple. Normally they'll be pushed all the way in to this junction box. And what you do is underneath of them, there is a little push tab. So you'll push in, say it's like this direction, you'll push in and then use the flathead screwdriver to gently pry on this surface. And you should notice that they just back out. Do that to both of them. And that's it, we're done. You can go ahead and reassemble the rear deck lid if you'd like. Uh, I would, for safety purposes. Now with everything back in place, I must state, leave your battery breaker in the off position. You will not be using your batteries anymore, and in order for this to work, it has to be in the off position. Okay, let's go for a drive and see if we've accomplished our goal. Look at that. I hope you can see it. We're now at 13.9 volts. And I am running the air conditioner and the radio is currently on. Now you'll notice that that will fluctuate. You can check this with your own voltmeter or I'm using a scan gauge. Uh, don't mind the blue tape, it's only temporary. Right. So let's go for a little drive so I can explain what else happens 
with modifying the batteries like this. You may notice now that your check engine light and maintenance required light are permanently on. If you live in a state that has vehicle inspections like safety or emission, this will no longer pass unless you use the hack to bypass that signal. That's for a different video. The car still has enough power for me to drive it to and from work, which is all I really needed. I'm used to driving slow cars if you've seen anything else on this channel, especially with the old Festiva. But there is something else to be wary of when doing this. You see how we're currently at 13.7 volts charging? Well, that's great. If we go over 4,000 RPMs, you'll notice that my battery light and brake light just came on. And also, our voltage has dropped and it continues to drop unless you shift into a higher gear and leave it there for about a minute. are still dropping and our lights are still on our lights just went out and our volts are back up where they should be that was probably less than a minute I can check in the video I'd like to mention that I've been driving this car for about a week in this current configuration with the battery disconnected and simply using it to drive to and from work I've had zero issues with it even if you want to call that little flashing brake light uh, not charging for one minute thing an issue, it's perfectly livable. You don't notice any decreased power during that time. You simply just upshift to a higher gear, cruise below 4000 RPM for a little bit, and it'll turn off and everything will be back to normal. If this video helps you out in any way, please consider giving it a like. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon with some more tips and tricks.